I have warned you about AI being built into children's toys. And this week we got a report saying, yep, this guy once again was right. Thanks for checking out this video by Switch to Linux. If you like this type of content, subscribe to the channel, leave us a like and a comment down below. So, as many of you know, if you follow my channel, I'm uh, very suspicious of AI. Not that it's completely, totally worthless, but even in my own experimentations utilizing AI, and I'm not going to release my whole report because I've played around with one model. I will be downloading more models soon. Uh, but the problem that I found with AI is it gets a lot of things wrong. And if we are just dumping prompts into an AI tool and we don't know how to fact check things, we will get a lot of wrong information. On top of that, AI can steer conversations into really weird areas really, really quick. And that is actually something that just happened in a toy that uh, a United States consumer awareness group was experimenting with uh, just this week. Uh, well, at least the report was uh, released this week. So, uh, Foloy uh, has an AI teddy bear that uh, basically simple conversations with it. No prompting, no like, hey, teddy bear, what should I uh, do with my teacher? Um, it, it would literally just went right on into weird, kinky places and talked about playing with matches and where you could find knives and things like that. And this is supposed to be a children's toy. And so they say here that it jumped from friendly chats to uh, S-word topics and unsafe household advice, to put it blind, you know, bluntly. Uh, it shows how easily artificial intelligence can cross serious boundaries. And they say here, uh, is this something really, we really need inside of AI-powered stuffed animals? So it's easy to get swept up in the excitement of artificial intelligence, especially when it's packaged with a plush teddy bear, promising warmth, fun, and a little extra curiosity. So this is the toy bear, the Kuma bear, which has been taken, like temporarily taken off the market. Now, I wanted to find out, does this toy need to be perpetually internet connected? And it would appear the answer is yes. In the user manual, it has all of the modes and how to set it up and how to turn it on to the uh, AI. In fact, the, the here's the AI setup. Of course, you have to scan the QR code. It's in here somewhere. Scan the QR code to get the app, of course. And then you set it all up and then you hand this uh, psychopathic creature to your child. And uh, if it can't get on the internet, it'll be like, help, I can't get on the internet. And um, basically, uh, this toy is perpetually listening on the internet and it is utilizing a chat GPT, uh, what was it, 4, 4.0 model. Now, this raises a lot of questions. Obviously, uh, chat GPT is trying to add this erotica mode uh, into it where you pay $20 and provide your identity. But apparently, this thing could get there without that because this is just based, uh, built into the children's toy. And even any, any alleged safeguards were able to easily bypass out of the thing. And so according to the report from USPIRG, this is a public interest research group, uh, they quickly veered into wildly inappropriate territory during research tests. Conversations escalated from innocent to S-words within minutes. The bear didn't just respond to explicit prompts, which would have been more or less understandable. Researchers said it introduced these subjects on its own, including BDSM related topics, explaining knots for beginners and reference role play scenarios. And I'm not going to finish that sentence. Uh, in some conversations, it probed for personal details and offered advice involving dangerous objects in the home, um, including how to play with matches and make sure you blow it out all the way before throwing it away, which, by the way, you should not blow out a match and throw it in the trash can. You blow out a match, put it under water, and then throw it in the trash can. <laughs> uh, but this raises the concern, you know, how often does uh, chat GPT and whatever get things wrong? Well, in my quick experiments, I tested the Gemma 3 model on a Llama, and I asked it about a matter I was very knowledgeable about and probed it for information. And it got a lot of things wrong from the geography to a town to not considering the questions I was saying. And uh, of course, when you correct it and, you, and it's like, oh, yes, of course, it will then proceed to patronize you. 
And then I went back because a friend of mine says, well, does this remember what you do? Well, maybe within the same conversation, but utilizing uh, after I had put my Olama on a server, accessed it under a new conversation, it was not able to recall the previous conversations, although it pretended that it did. And then it gave me a bunch of generic nonsense that had nothing to do with anything that we had talked about. And this is one of those major concerns that I have with AI is it is if it's used as a time saving device, companies, people everywhere is going to use it as that time saving device, even though the responses it's giving are barely going to be appropriate. And that is the biggest concern that I have. Now, the fallout for this was very swift. And uh, what was interesting here is that uh, OpenAI uh, revoked the developer access for, they say, pi policy violations. But I'm curious, how were how was their developer API able to access such erotic conversations to begin with, uh, particularly for a children's toy? And so uh, this proves the point here. AI does, uh, does not automatically make something better when companies rush for smart features without real safety checks. The risks fall on the people using them, especially children who can't recognize dangerous content when they see it. And I wonder with this uh, wonderful use of M dashing here, I'm wondering if this article itself was written in ChatGPT. <laughs> Makes me wonder. Uh, but. The point is is very clear here. I think our current business model pushes way too fast. Our business world just we just want to see the profit, so let's rush something to the market before it's properly tested. And basically, the early adopters become the guinea pigs for the results. And in cases like Character.ai, this comes with tragic results and consequences. And so we need to really slow it down and uh, maybe even think about this. Of course, I've talked about this before. Zuckerberg does not want his children on social media nor use technology in schools. Uh, Steve Jobs did not let his children use technology in schools. Bill Gates did not let his schools use technology in teaching the children. Well, maybe we should listen to some of the people helping to train some of the AI. So from The Guardian, meet the AI workers who tell their friends and family to stay away from from AI. Very interesting indeed. Uh, so this goes into uh, a worker on Amazon Mechanical Turk. This is a place where companies can hire workers on the platform to perform tasks, automate things, and verify. The example she goes down into is uh, whether approve a, a, a comment as racist or not. I guess that was her specific micro role. That's interesting. And she had no idea what this uh, moon cricket word was. And uh, I'm, I didn't really have anything and uh, I'm not going to research it, but she says she was about to mark that as says, okay. And then she's like, well, what is that? She researched it. It says it is a, uh, apparently a racial slur against black Americans. So she's like, okay, yeah, that is definitely or most likely a more racist based comment. Okay. And so she says that unless you are really, really, really knowledgeable in the content, AI is going to steer you wrong. They talked in here about untrained people not related to medical having to decide if medical information spit out by AIs was medically correct. Uh, they're not medical people. They can't possibly make that. And even medical people may not be able to agree on that. You know, talk about what's the best diet out there. Well, you want to engage in a uh, WWF Royal Rumble, start throwing all of the diets into the ring and see who comes out. My favorite study was the vegetarian who had to be forced by what the data said that the Atkins was the best for losing weight and for improving biomarkers. Uh, then you also have Mediterraneans, you have the South Beach, and you got the Ornish diet. You got all these different areas in here. And one of the challenges that we see in the diet area is most of the diets does the diet versus the Western diet. And any diet is going to be better than the Western diet. <laughs> And so um, to ask an a to to ask a non-medical person to verify if what a medical AI is spitting out is accurate, uh, even medical people can't agree with this. And so uh, when we're relying on these, this is one of the concerns I have with Google wants there to be one answer to one question. And this means they have to decide for themselves what is the best answer. So think about a world, you know, 15, 20 years from now, and instead of doing a Google search, you just go, hey, uh, hey, Google, what is the best diet? And it just 
probably is going to spit out the Ornish diet because, you know, it's been trained on the leftist uh, liberals who believe that vegetarianism is a superior diet because you're not eating meat. And the Ornish diet is mostly vegetarian. And uh, but the reality is, is that solid research suggests a number of different diets are better depending on the individual person. So there's no single one that is absolutely the best or absolutely the worst. A lot of it just depends on your biology. And so uh, the bot watchers sound the alarm. There are a lot of people working in this industry that several of them are quoted from this saying, yeah, I don't really use AI much myself anymore. And I encourage my family not to. Some of them are forbidding their children from using it until they have critical thinking skills, because to the ultimate point, the AI will give out a bunch of data that looks really good and confident, but may not actually be the case. Now, the question I asked AI was, would it be better to be in Barstow or in Sunfair for solar panel efficiency? I was debating moving locations and it's like, well, Sunfair is this coastal city. And so, um, you know, being a coastal city has better solar irradiance or whatever else. And I don't know if that's particularly true, but I'm like, uh, Sunfair is not a coastal city. So I go to Google Maps to be like, OK, did I spell it wrong or is there another Sunfair anywhere else? And uh, no, indeed, there is only one Sunfair and I spelled it right. And it is not a coastal city. So now I have to correct the AI. Oh, you are so right. I I am so sorry. It's like we well, can't even get something as fundamentally basic as geography right. How can you expect to get anything else right? And then, uh, you know, it was looking at, well, this this one here is is at a much higher elevation. This one's here. Like, they differ by 400 feet elevation. <laughs> okay? That's, one, that's not a massive elevation change. If we're talking about, you know, Death Valley versus the Aspen Mountains, that's radical elevation differences. All right? Um, but the problem here is that it didn't recognize those. And then while wanting to concern with the angle, it couldn't understand the angles of the sun on different parts of the earth. What does the 0.2 degree difference in latitude between those two cities mean in reality? Well, it can mean more efficiency. It might mean less efficiency. Who really knows? And the problem is, is that unless you really, really, really are thinking about it. Now, was it a totally fruitless conversation? No, it gave me, gave me things to think about. But at the same time, I had to point out several errors in the response. And that's what these people are warning about, that uh, it is fragile, not futuristic. And it is really based on a whole lot of people running in the background, checking on things. And some of these people checking on things may not actually have a clue themselves. And that really raises a concern. So once again, AI itself is not inherently the devil, but it can lead us on a quick path there if we are not very, very cautious with how we use it. So there are uh, my thoughts. Let me know your thoughts about all this down below. Let me know, would you let your children play with internet connected AI devices? Uh, I want to see all those no's down in the comments. So anyway, thanks for watching. I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.